Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah, Game of fucking Thrones. Welcome to Spoiler Alert. Tonight we are spoiling Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 10, entitled The Children. Uh, with you tonight, my name is Rachel Murdoch, and uh, with me I have Brett Murdoch. He says hello. He's got a mouthful of shit. Um, Gross. <laughs> <it's> totally <laughs> nice. Tony Polanco. It's the season finale. Why? <laughs> Mr. Carlos Romero. Vela Mugulus. And Mr. Colby Schumacher. How's it going, guys? Goodness. So where where on earth do you guys want to start? This was such a jam-packed fucking episode, 66 minutes long. It was 66 minutes, but it felt shorter for some reason. Yeah, it sure did. It did. <laughs> how, how long are they usually? Isn't that like, like 52? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Somewhere between 52 and 59, usually. Yeah, I like how they're just like, no, we, we're not going to cut this one down. Yeah. We'll just make it however through. long we wanted to. Tony, what were you telling me about somebody submitting something? Just the show? Oh, basically, um, usually when... I don't know the names of these award shows, but um, usually what they do is like a company will like, go, hey, uh, we want to submit uh, our show for best writing. They usually do this for the season, uh, what these guys did was submit it to whatever companies in charge of this and go, hey, we want to submit this episode for best writing. Like, not the whole season, just this episode specifically. That kind of tells you something right there. Was it just for best writing or best everything? No, just Cause... for best writing. Um, And was, is it the Emmys? The Tony's? I don't know the names of these fucking things. But yeah, it's one I, of those. Yeah, the Emmys, I think. Yeah, so that that tells you something that they were like, hey, this is like our best episode, guys. Here you go. You know, that's what at least what it <laughs> says to me. <laughs> they were all saving it for the end. And this episode was fucking crazy. You're right. It's like, where do we start? It's like so much shit happened in this. It's like, yeah. Okay, I, mean, I want to let's yeah. let's start with the obvious then. Um, the children is where I thought it was going to would be a uh, Bran and Hodor and the whole clan. You want to start there? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. That shit was Jason and the fucking Argonauts, man. You saw that? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I'm like, with Skeleton Warriors, okay, here we go. It felt very Diablo to me. Yeah. <laughs> I actually kind of care about Bran now. <laughs> Only kind of. Only kind of. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, because his story's been boring and shitty. It's, 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 it's kind of been like Daenerys is like, oh, they're going north through this tree, and they keep almost having awesome stuff happen, but they narrowly avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> and, this is uh, actually, in the books, this is actually some of my favorite stuff. And yeah, it's, it's crazy because they, uh, this is way early, like how it's supposed to show up. But yeah, they sped up his, uh, Bran's timeline. But it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it seems pretty good. I, I like the whole little, like, J Jason and the Argonauts reference by Tony, but yeah, that, that was pretty cool. I mean, it's sad that Jojen died, but gotta move on. Yeah. I wasn't really sad that Jojen died. The sweaty kid, the sweaty kid that was dying of AIDS or that's, whatever. That's all, really, he, he, that's all he really brought to the table was a lot of sweating. This show loves to kill people by stabbing them in the stomach, I noticed. And it wasn't just, like, once. It was like, ha, -ha! Yeah. <laughs> over and over and over and over and over. It's like, shit, Jesus. And he wasn't even like, hey, somebody, I'm being stabbed. He was just like, yep, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, I knew this shit was coming. It's cool. Yeah. This is happening. <laughs> I like the effect of the, what are they called? The, um, I keep wanting the to call them the old, the old children. The first children? <laughs> the first children. There you go. The first children. The children uh, of the forest. Just, yeah, yeah, where she's lobbing the point. fireballs, and you see the the reflection of the fireballs and his cold, dead eyes. Like that was that was hardcore, man. I kind of liked Jojen. I mean, his sister was kind of meh. 
Yeah, she but was at least, cool. I liked at her. least at least he like he it. produced some sort of like visions and stuff and guided Bran a little bit. Yeah, if it wasn't yeah. for him, he wouldn't have gotten there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying the sister was worthless. Obviously, she was the fighter between them. She, you know, carried her weight and all. I just, eh. if 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 it had to be between one of them, I wish it would have been the sister. That's all I'm saying. Did she? What did she, did she have a weapon in the show? Like that she used primarily a certain type of weapon at all? I thought it was a crossbow. A crossbow? I thought it was a spear. Yeah, she was supposed to use a trident. Hmm. A trident, was, huh? Yeah, she was specifically yes. supposed to use a frog hunting trident, and so it was a smaller trident, but it was still a trident. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. What yeah, do you I... think of a uh, battle Hodor? Uh, <laughs> it took I love... too long. I yeah. love Battle Hodor. Yeah, it, it's it's only really cool when Bran kind of shifts into him, because otherwise he's just like, Hodor, Hodor, I don't know where to go, Hodor. Which is still awesome. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> slow and derpy, but kind of awesome still. <laughs> I was thinking about this, because, um, you know, if you think, because at first I was like, wait, how does Hodor know how to do all that shit? But remember, Bran, when he was a kid, he was still being trained in the castle and stuff, so he wouldn't know all those awesome moves, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Bran knows a little bit. Bran is, Bran is a little more skilled than Hodor, at least. Hodor. Right. I find it weird that uh that Summer only got to help once. Like he only killed one of those things and then we didn't see him the rest of the time. Yeah, yeah I know. I was kinda I was kinda hoping that he would go into Summer more than Hodor. <clears throat> kind of kind of reminiscent of, of last week where where a ghost only killed like one guy that we saw. Right. Listen, man, we ain't got that kind of money right here. Yeah, yeah, especially when it's a CGI character on another CGI character. Yes. Yeah. Well, did anyone feel like uh, little Elder Scrolls from those, you know, skeletons a little bit? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was totally that perfect. Lot. Yeah. Especially when they ran into, like, the invisible wall and just, like, shattered. You know, because that's oh, like when you yeah. kill uh, on, you know, Elder Scroll, any Elder Scroll games, when the, you know, skeleton dies, it just, like, crumbles into, like, all the bones. Totally awesome. All the bones. Hey, yeah, that reminded me of kind of sending the Argonauts. <laughs> I was kind of surprised to see, um, like, definitive concrete magic magic. Like, yeah. Yes. fucking magic. Yep. Well, that's what I was telling you earlier in the season, too, that, that those are the ones who really control the real magic in, in, in the world. Yeah. As the children of the forest. Now, are those related to, like, the godswood trees and the, and the gods that, like, Ned Stark worshipped? Yeah, that's why they originally worshipped them. That was oh, like part okay. of the deal with the first men. That's what it was. Yeah, that they'd come and pay homage. But the children don't really like worship the forest or whatever. They're just like part of it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like uh, an allegory for elves. They draw their path. They're kind of like druidic elves. You're, you know, the elves is a, is a very good comparison, but they draw all their power from nature and specifically the trees. You know, so I would say they're like druidic elves. Yeah, like uh, almost like nymphs. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's a good one. What elves? Uh, what yeah. about what about homeboy that was like lodged in the tree? What do we think about him? Boy that was lodged in the tree. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't think that that's. I mean, that's that's the raven, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, he controlled the raven. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, it's it's the same it's the same mind behind it all. It's I I, I kind of liked his answer of you know, I have been many things and now I am this. It's it's kind of how you would respond to somebody if you were just more enlightened than them. If you could you know just exist within different bodies or throughout ages of time, just kind of yeah. be like, yeah, I mean, as best you can understand it, I'm this old guy. That's the easiest way to explain it. Moving on. <laughs> but, uh... I, I gotta it... say, I, I think they... I'm glad they did this, mostly because I would have hate... I would have hate to have seen Bran's season end exactly the same way it began. Traveling through the fucking forest and through the snow and her de der de Yeah, and I, I, I bet you they made that... Is his nose getting bigger? Yeah, I is think his, his nose getting is getting smaller? bigger and his eyebrows are getting bushier. Yeah, he reminds me of are. he reminds me of uh, old school Hermione Granger. 
Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, does anybody think they made that decision very specifically? Because maybe people joked about Daenerys walking through the desert for two seasons a little too much? Yeah, I would say so. It could be. It, in Bran's storylines in the books, I, I think they were pretty scarce. They weren't that many that I remember. I don't know if Colby or Tony could... Yeah, no, you're right. you're right. You're on the right track. Yeah, so I think it was kind of both. Um, they didn't want to sh- maybe stretch that out more than it should. Kind of like Theon's storyline was uh, fast-forwarded a lot. I think yeah. they're doing the same thing about the brand stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the Theon uh, stuff. As far as storylines. Uh, yeah. We didn't no, I have find a question. anything. Oh, what? go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just I was just venting about the fact that of course we didn't find anything out of, about the new Dark Sansa this week. Nope. Yeah, I yeah, figured no that. More, no more Sansa. No more Littlefinger. We're done with that, I guess, until next season. Yeah, I figured that uh, her walking down with like, oh, did you guys notice too with Sansa that week? Uh, she didn't have a wolf pelt on anymore. She had black feathers on her. Yeah, I noticed that on her shoulders. Black yep. feathers and the, yeah. and the dark hair and the, yeah. Right. Maybe. What do you think the black feathers are for? Oh. Ravens. No, do you guys know what uh, Littlefinger's house crest that he made his own his crest? No. Mockingbird. Yeah, the Mockingbird. Ah, interesting. So she's kind of throwing up like, hey. <laughs> right. Mockingbird over here. Hey, hey, hey. Right. Wasn't that the name of an episode too? I think so. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, Mockingbird was episode. Yeah. 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 Do, do, do. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> we grow shit. We throw shit. So here's, in. so here's my question to, in particular, Tony and Colby. Yes. It's an obvious one. <laughs> what do you guys think about that omission? Do you guys like it? Oh, I mean, go ahead and talk. Gonna... Go ahead and talk about the omission because that's what everybody's fucking talking about. I want to know. Are we gonna talk about that now or later? Well, well I mean, it's, 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 it's with the scene that we were just talking about. Yeah, it's the omission that has to do with Bran. Yeah. Oh well, in, in the oh yeah, him. we can't talk about. It. We may as well talk about it because it's already over. Well, Tony, right. we don't. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, Tony, I don't. We don't know that. <laughs> Dude, we, what are you? Uh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna, you're gonna like use magic or something? What are you gonna do? How can how can you undo that? You can't undo that. I don't well, know. They, where's they hold him then? Well, that's what I'm talking about. Well, if you're right. bringing up the question, you're not gonna let me answer it. Then what the fuck's the point of asking a question? Oh no no no. no. I'm, I'm saying I have like, no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah, we should probably put up a Those big. Those uh, are geeking out. <laughs> we should probably. Put I'm up not a saying big, uh... shit. So no, no. My my question was: Did you like the omission, or did you, or do you think this particular character would show up later? He'll show up later. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you can bring him up. Back. You can bring him up later. I have a spoiler sound, so it's okay. I right. don't. Don't see, worry. I didn't say anything. Yeah. But I don't see how they can even bring him in later. I don't. I don't either. But maybe they could do it. I don't know. I mean, yeah, because I, I, the whole purpose of this character's existence was so Rand could get to the. Yeah. Hey guys, let me ask yeah. you this real quick: Is this important and changes the course of the entire story, or is this something pretty well bottled in this episode? Potentially, or if not this we episode? don't know yet. If not this episode, the next few episodes. Well, we don't even we don't even know. So it, it's well. Crazy. I mean, he can't go in through that barrier. So, yeah. I mean, there's no way that they're going to bring him into there. And okay, so what we're talking about, we'll, we'll go ahead and spoil a little bit more. Thank you. Just fucking. Yeah. Okay. So originally, there's a guy that you don't know who he is, but uh, Sam uh, he helps Sam and Gilly, and Sam dubs him Cold Hands because when he touched his hands, they were freezing. So you're not sure is he alive? Is he dead? What is what it, ag- exactly he is? Well, we then when all seen that him, have we? We have not. And then uh, when all that stuff's happening and that children of the forest person comes out and saves them, Cold Hands is actually the one who comes to save them and gets them through. Hmm. That's not an omission. That's a replacement. And right. it sounds like they wrote out well, the character from earlier interactions as well. Well, yeah, the cold because Cold Hands guides them pretty much from the wall. To the to the the tree, right? Yeah, I don't think they're gonna have that from the sound. I don't of think it. so. Yeah, but and the, and the reason and the reason and the reason why we think it's important is because this character could potentially be someone we. It, it's like a lot of speculation. It could be some character that from the a, past. Yes, a certain mm-hmm. person that's been lost for a while. Only speculation, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
And what is this only speculation? Well, if you think, okay, so think back throughout the whole, you know, four seasons and think about one person that's been lost that everybody kind of mentions sporadically. And they're like, oh, so-and-so has been gone for a while now. And, and it's the only person who we haven't seen since season one who's supposedly supposed to be around. Supposedly. I have no idea. Uh, it's a Stark. Guys, yeah, it's a Stark. Yeah, it's a Stark. <laughs> is the, it was a Stark that we met in the very first episode. Who went the above, baby you know, beyond the wall? Huh? Hmm. Yeah, he went beyond the wall, and we haven't seen him again. Benjamin the baby Stark did? No, Benjamin no. Stark. His uncle. His Benjamin. The uncle. Benjamin. Yeah. He was a ranger. Uh-huh. He was the one who came in the first season. Oh, and, yeah. Like, kind of tried to talk John out of coming to the wall, but and then kind of guided him to the wall as well. And, yeah. Okay. You know, it was like, when you come here, you get no special favor just because you're my, my nephew. You know, you guys still have to come here and work. I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah, but it's only speculation. There's, it's not spoilers because we don't even know. So right, it, it, nothing's look. been said in the book or anything. Well, that's no big deal. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that kind of thing. Um, so we're getting pretty close to actually being caught up with the books, aren't we? Uh, yeah. There's only uh, two more books. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, moving on to uh, Cersei and her big. Uh... <laughs> Declaration. Her, her big, uh, her big coming clean with Tywin, and uh, I can't believe Tywin was just so ostrichy when it comes to this. Like, how did you not know? How could you tell yourself all this time that no, it wasn't true? That no, it wasn't. I thought more of Tywin. I kind of did too. You know, but at the same time, I actually kind of expect that from Tywin. You know, it's like he's so focused on family that he's just willing to like not see the obvious. I, I kind of. In a weird way, it kind of makes sense to me that he was blind to that, but he's not blind to all the other stuff. Like, when it comes to his family, that's when he kind of gets blinded by shit. So, in a weird way, it made sense to me. Yeah, parents, you know, usually kind of just assume that their kids are on the same page as, as them, you know, especially growing up in that kind of a a world, you know. Like... <laughs> you know, I just thought about something. You know how, like, when, when like you're outside and you see a parent, they have this screaming kid, everybody else notices it, but them, it might yep. be something like that, you know? Yeah. You yeah, just, but they're, just they're, fucking they're, tune it out. But yeah. they're rumors. Like, I would, I I don't take that as, as true. Uh, Colby, uh, did you ever have parents suspicious of you doing, uh, like, smoking pot or sneaking out or drinking or any of that kind of thing when you were a teenager? Not until I got busted by the cops. <laughs> no? <laughs> and then he goes, wow, this is completely shocking. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, mine, was, yeah. mine was the opposite. <laughs> My dad was gone all the time, though. Like, he had a you know race team that he, like, traveled the country with, and he owned his own business, and... My dad was always gone, so I'm not a very good example. So yeah, I, have like friend, I have a friend who's nearly 40, yeah. and his mom doesn't know he smokes weed, even though every time you visit his house, it smells like fucking weed. She just doesn't <laughs> realize this. Yeah. And, and, Brett, I was the same way. I was accused of doing drugs since I was 11. So, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah. I can see that. But, yeah, I, I, and the thing is with Tywin, think about it like this. Um, if this rumor is true, everything that he's worked for falls to nothing. I mean, those children aren't even his heirs, really. I mean, you know? look at them. They're completely all blonde. Yeah, I mean, right. The, which, Jamie, and, Jamie and Cersei are too fucking close. Yeah, which makes yeah. you think that he may have been like, well, I mean, maybe I ought to look into this a little bit. No, nah, that, that is like a classic case of ostrich right there, man. That guy had his head so far up his ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think yep. he was he was so hyper-focused on the family legacy that even, you know, getting his grandchildren that are named Baratheon, but they're still kings and queens, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, you're, you're going to turn a blind eye like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. They're still my blood, you know. Who cares how they got there? They're there. Ugh, and, so and that was like... Yeah, and that was like she the was first... she was just fucking rubbing it in his face too, just <laughs> yeah. getting all up in his face like me and my brother are fucking like it couldn't have been any more <laughs> just like gross and blatant and Jesus Cersei like I'm it, it was uncomfortable to watch kind of yeah well like when she went in and, and she then after first talking when she to fucking Jamie tackled him like oh yeah yeah totally <laughs> yeah. I, I thought she was for... gonna give I thought she was gonna suck his dick right yeah there. That's what I was about <laughs> to say <laughs> me too okay. Does anybody else in this room have a sibling? An opposite yes. sex sibling? Yeah, yeah. I have four. Yeah. 
See, so it's it's ew, 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 yeah, ew. It, absolutely. It, yeah. It's it hurt on a it hurt on a personal level. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's terrible. Oh god, now I'm really thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hadn't hit home before you had it. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's funny. That's horrible. But yeah, that was the first time we saw Tywin like flinch, man. He was like shook. I was like, oh shit, you even saw his hand shaking a little bit too. I thought he was like, gonna damn. backhand her, just give her a nice big pimp <laughs> slap. Dude, I thought so too. She had yeah. it coming, shit. Right. She's like, no, I'm not I'm not gonna marry this um Pillow game. biter. This pillow yeah, biter, pillow this biter. gay Terrell. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna leave King's Landing. I'm gonna stay here. You have like you have ripped my uh children away from me. One's dead, the other one's fucking in Dorn. I'm not leaving Tommen. I'm not leaving you and Marjorie to fight over Tommen. And y'all can go fuck yourselves. And this is why. And I mean it's it's pretty much Cersei played her trump card. You know, I mean, there's really nothing it's it's all about legacy for, for Tywin, so if the legacy is proven false and full of incest, then what the fuck does he have? Yeah, right. nothing. Yep. So I, I have a question, and so does does Loras and Marjorie have an older brother in the show? They've mentioned him, but they haven't really like you know made it very clear. But they mentioned yeah. him briefly. Okay, so so if if Cersei was to marry Loras, why would she have to leave King's Landing? Go to High Tower. He'd probably just send yeah, her away. Yeah, she has to go to High Garden. Yeah. High Tower, High Garden, but, whatever. Yeah. But Plus, but isn't the older brother the like the what the ruler of High Garden? Why 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 does Loras have to be there? Hmm, that is a good question. But well, I, I guess this, this well, I don't know. That's yeah. You know, it's like wait, is it like you can't have two quote unquote queens in the capital, so you got to get rid of one of them? I, yeah, it's a good question. Well, you guys remember what happens in the book, right? Well, yeah, yeah but, she was but, she was gonna marry the right. She's gonna marry the older brother who was yeah a handicap. Uh, I remember was he like mentally got hit hit in the head or could something? It, I think he couldn't walk because I remember Sansa was gonna marry him first. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. For some reason, I was thinking he's like uh, mentally disabled from getting hit in the nah, head or something. No, nah, he's just like <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <like that. laughs> no, he was he was born special. Yeah. Well, he wasn't born special either. He got like dropped by the fucking nanny. Oh, that's no. right. Yeah. Well, and and uh, back to the uh, Tyrell. That's uh, but wasn't he? Didn't he get injured in battle? Or yeah, it was. Or, he got or, or was in it a uh, was it jousting? I don't know what it was, but yeah, he got injured. Yeah, he definitely got. He got it's a lot of cripples on this damn show. I'm thinking about the one from Dorn now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyway. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Cripples, yeah. bastards, and broken things. Oh, yeah. fucking uh, <laughs> Jamie breaking uh, Tyrion out of jail. And uh, I, I, I love uh, Tyrion's opening line, like, you son of a whore. And Jamie's like, is that any way to talk about our mother? That was so cute. That was yeah. Fun. yeah. That, was, oh, that was pretty awesome, though, when he was like, uh, I suppose this is the last time we'll see each other. You know, and he like leaned down and gave him a huge hug and kissed him on the Aww, cheek. And, it was so cute. You know, it's like, you know, I have an older brother who's like 10 years, almost exactly 10 years older than me. And he's always been there for me like that. <laughs> see, mine was from the opposite side. I have a sister who's six years younger than me. So, yeah, I, I was like, it's nice to see a little warmth and, and sweetness. But um, this is kind of a great segue. Did anybody else notice? And I think this is the thing that made the show for me: the dramatic change in tone from that kind of warm, huggy moment. Tyrion walks up the stairs, and then you see him kind of turn around, and it's like he's like, rooms, "I got, I got business to do." The room yep. suddenly gets cold, and I, I I'm yeah. not sure if that's Peter Dinklage's acting or R. R. Martin's writing or what, but you could immediately tell, like. Oh wait a second! Something's going on He's here. He's got unfinished business here. Peter Peter Dinklage is like really gifted at portraying his emotions through his face. It's yeah. Really yeah, yeah. The look when she rolled over and said, "Oh my lion!" The look on his face was perfect. Oh, uh, it was just murderous. Like she totally. I, I had... yelled out, "Murder that bitch!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like if you noticed at first, it almost looked like he was like happy that she's you know rolled over and said, "My lion." Like it was like you know familiar to him, but then like instantly was like, "Wait, she's talking about my dad." What the yeah. f? You know? <laughs> yeah. 
like his gut reaction was then then quelled by an understanding that you're not he's just a dumb hoe. That's yep. all. And it's really sad because he really loved her. He yep. really loved her. And it's just, man, if you've ever been betrayed like that, man, I could, I think... I could, I, I could see where the murder would would happen. I just, I would. I'm totally behind him just fucking choking her to death. Yeah, especially with the... Did you guys notice what the necklace was? Yeah, the hand. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, mm. it's like, you know, she pretty much like, you know, she, she's the reason he was even, like, about to be executed because he was already on the road to freedom. It's like, dude, just go to the wall, you'll be fine. And then she, and then comes she in. came in and fucking ruined it all. Yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. Play, so I, I Play totally devil's don't. advocate here. The actress herself tries to defend the position, mentioning that she wanted him to go with her to Pentos, and he rejected her, and that when he left her, being the lowborn that she is, she had no choice but to be the whore that she was prior to him finding her. That, it, you know, she, she wasn't necessarily a prostitute by choice. I was gonna say, didn't he just give her the choice to, like, set up... He, he was gonna set her up to be a rich woman in one of these free cities, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. And I'm not saying I agree it. with this. I'm. I'm just wondering what everybody's opinion on, on on the guilt of Shay is. Did she deserve what came to her, or uh, was it a big misunderstanding? Yeah, she fucking deserved it. Yeah, uh, I think I think she deserved a, it. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a murky thing, dude. It's like I, I kind of understand what she's coming from, but at the other hand, I understand why Tyrion killed her, and I don't feel bad that he did that either. She I did didn't betray him. She grabbed end, that but... knife, dude. Yeah, and, no, yeah. I know. Well, yeah, because she knew, dude. After what she did to him, yeah. But I, I could kind of see that. It's like, hey, if we just went to, you know, whatever city we we're gonna go, we would have been fine. So I could kind of understand that. But yeah, I don't blame Tyrion for what he did, especially after she pulled the, the fucking knife. Right. But then again, like she didn't really hold any cards to have him just go with her. You know, I don't know. I just felt like Tyrion was kind of like the, the guy that had the wealth and the status and everything. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, show well, shade is like, different. It's not like she couldn't that. have made a name for herself. She could have been the little finger of Pentos, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or she could have gone back with uh, the, all that Lannister gold and just lorded over the people of her home. Yeah. So personally, I think I, that uh, that basically when Tyrion comes in the room and Shay grabs the knife, everything happens so fast that I kind of get the impression that Tyrion was already going to murder that bitch from from the <laughs> second she said my lion and he kind of he kind of came at her. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I don't think Tyrion could have reacted to the knife fast enough that that would have been the reason he choked her out. He no. was going to kill that bitch anyway. Yeah, yeah, I felt the same way in the books. And yeah, what was it? What was the, the scene like in the book? It, uh, it wasn't that different, to be honest. No, it was yeah, actually no. really similar. similar. It was actually pretty spot on. Except for when, you know, Tywin dies, he should him like... <laughs> yeah, he made a big exactly. point about how bad he smelled and all of the shit that he was full of came out of him. Oh, yeah, awesome. and, and Trayden was like, oh, I guess you don't shit gold. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so it was actually, it was actually uh, better in the book then. Yeah, the, the Tywin know. part at least. It, but it was a different motivation, though. Um, I read this interview with with Martin today, and he talked about that whole scene, how different it was. How basically in the show, it seemed like he actually had a motivation for going up there. In the book, it was he just went up there. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. He's just like, "Hey, that door's there. Let me just go up there." And he shows up, and there's Shay, and then he kills her. Like he really had no plan whatsoever. He was just kind of just going with the flow. But in this hmm. one, he wanted like an he answer. looked like he was on a mission, man. Yeah, he wanted right. answers. Like, why did you put me on trial when you knew I was innocent? That was his mission in the show. Um, so yeah, when he goes up to time, and you saw time when he was still trying to control the the situation, even when he was taking a shit, you know. Let's go back to my bedchamber. We'll just we'll talk this out. You're my son, and blah blah blah. He's like, no, fuck you. Yeah, I'm your son. Look, I'm your son. Yeah, I saw a man scrambling. Like he, he yeah. desperately wanted to get anywhere but there. Because he knew he wanted could... to get off the shitter. Yeah, no, you saw he... him trying to get off like three times. <laughs> yeah, like I, uh, the way I felt is like, no, you don't, you don't let Tywin out of that room because as soon as you do, the trap closes around you. Yep. yep he'll walk by sure. somebody or a, a fucking servant will see him or somebody, and that 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 gold lust will kick in and somebody will save his ass. Yeah, you've got him pinned in a small room and nobody knows he's there. He's fucked. Yeah, but wasn't Varys a... a bigger part of it in the book? 
Well, let's let's get to well, it later because I want to ask you guys about um, what do you think about um, Tywin? Because he was like, oh, that whore, that whore, and then he's fucking her. What do you think about that whole situation? Well, that's I a mean, whore's job is yeah. to be fucked. Yeah, yeah, but I would I would have thought Tywin. Maybe this is me giving too much. Weight. I would have thought he would be like beyond such things, you know, like just fucking a whore. I guess he's not. He's just no, based like remember, everybody else. Dude, you remember what happened to his last, the last wife he had? Yeah, he, Tyrion. Quote unquote, yeah, killed her. He he loves not only hurting but shaming Tyrion at ah, any way okay. that he can. I see what you're getting at. So he's so, doing that as a means to hurt him. Oh yeah, yeah. I, like it's some like, and the weird thing is that Tyrion was never supposed to find out necessarily. Which yeah, makes it some kind of really weird, fucked up. Like he just gets off on fucking his son over, yeah. which is even darker than. <laughs> Cersei's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a weird like he he hates his son in a way that I I, I can't understand. He fucking resents him. I mean, yeah, he, he resents him for what he turned out to be. He resents him for having killed his wife essentially. You know, by being born, he's just he's just been a black mark. It's like, as far as Tywin's concerned, Tyrion should have never existed, and he's and he's been a mistake ever since. Exactly. And it's really fucking sad. Yeah, Jamie really was the only one. He's like, you guys, he's like, you're still blaming him for that? He's like, you know he had nothing to do with that, or he was just born. He can't help that. So what did you guys think about the uh, whole Arya and the oh, we, we, didn't get, and... we didn't talk about Varys, though, man. Varys, yeah. Yes, well, we, we, yeah, we oh, did yeah. kind of go back to... Um... Well, first of all, with uh, Tyrion, um, first he shoots him in, what, the gut... And then he shoots him in, like, the shoulder. You would think that yeah. with the crossbow and how close he was, that, you know, he, there could have been a headshot, there could have been a neck shot, there could have been something else other than the gut and the shoulder. Like, it, was that the way it was in the, I guess, in the book? They, they, What did they do in the book differently in that scene? I think it was just one shot. and not, yeah. Was it to the head? No, uh, no it wasn't to the head. Yeah, it was through the gut. But it, from the what the books made it sound like, it was like dead center, straight through the gut. You know, yeah, like you knew really you were brutal. dead once you've been hit there. Yeah, like on the show, those didn't look like fatal wounds, right? You know? No, they really didn't. Oh yeah, I thought they did. The second he got shot in the stomach, I was, I was like, oh shit, there we go. Because getting shot in the stomach with a bullet is pretty much a, a damn near death sentence. That is like the most painful way to die. Yeah, it's a very long, slow way to die, and you, you, there's almost no way to not succumb to sepsis because you, you pierce through your guts, yeah, and then all yeah. that acid and bile. Ugh. It's it's a slow, <laughs> terrible way to die. I would, I would rather be stabbed in the heart than I think stabbed in the stomach. Just Still get it over with. By black hole. Just chop my head off. Yeah. How about that? I don't want to fucking get it over with. God. <laughs> Yeah, when he shot him, that was essentially the death sentence, which is why Tywin then just started talking shit. Yeah. Because I say whore. You, don't say that word. If if he had been shot in the in the thigh, Tywin would have been like, "Okay, well, now you got it out of your system. Are you happy now? Let's get the let's go to my study and and we can talk about this now that you've had your revenge or something like that." It's, it was only because he recognizes a fatal wound that he finally dropped the act. Yeah. And it just, I didn't like the way it left it open, um, because just before, you know, fucking the mountain was on his deathbed, and Cersei's new... Oh, Quyburn? Doctor, yeah. Yeah, Quyburn. Fucking voodoo, voodoo witch doctor dude decides to just, like, take over the Grand Meister's lab and just, and, and, and Frankenstein this, this mountain guy now... <laughs> It uh, looked like it looked like crocodile. Have you guys have you guys seen the effects of crocodile? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's that shit. Um, it's really popular in like Australia, I think. It's like super meth. It's. Toby, do you know any more about it than yeah, I do? So, I'd, I'd have uh, to Google it. Or something. It's uh, you like shoot it up in the skin, and where you have injected the drug, it, your your skin starts to look like it's scaly, and then literally starts to break away, and it's like decomposing your skin. Where every time you've shot up in that same spot, and so they, you know, looks like crocodile skin because it's so, you know, like scaly looking. Yeah, it's fucking. If you if if you haven't eaten yet, and you want to 
look at what this reminded me of, this mountain of wounds. Google image search crocodile. Oh, Actually, I would say just go off the mountain's wounds. Don't, don't Google it because it's <laughs> disgusting. And like chicks that like would shoot it up in their groins and now they don't have vaginas anymore because it literally ate out their whole... Yeah, it's oh, don't shame. don't Google it. It's terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> okay, fine. Don't Google it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I left it. I, I thought it left it kind of sloppily open or Why? something like that. Because... Why? Because of what he said. You know, she's like, "Will he be the same when he's done?" Or and he's like, "She's like, oh no, no, he won't no, no, be no, the no, same." No, 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 no. I think she's she's saying that uh, Tywin's death left it open for that, and there's, oh, there's a, okay. a couple of meant... like. Yeah, because yeah. it, it wasn't very definite. No, yeah, it was. Just because somebody doesn't get shot in the head doesn't mean they're not With dead. With the gory fucking ways that they have killed people, especially in this season. He put a crossbow through his stomach. He impaled the motherfucker with a crossbow bolt. You don't live through that. Then why bother with the shoulder? Because by uh, inflicting a fatal wound, you got to see Tywin one last time spot, uh, you know, spout bile and venom. And finally drop the fucking act. You, it, it's just, it's a kind of satisfaction thing. It's like, good, I finally got to see you be the asshole and take off the mask and then die. Because if, if, if Tyrion had murdered his father as his father was talking about forgiveness and you're my son and all this thing, it would have left a bad taste in people's mouth. But by really reaffirming that he's the bad guy before his death, you kind of get away with it scot-free and just enjoy the justice of it. It was... It was a kind of plot device. It's yeah, yeah okay. It was, and, guess, you know, it was well done. Brett, did you finally get that justice you were looking for? This yeah, episode, man. Yeah, that's actually, actually. what I was going to ask too. <laughs> I told I told Rachel I was like, man, this episode went about as good as it could have gone for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, okay, so that one uh, um, episode you got or one uh, spoiler cast you guys did, and I wasn't there. And Brett, you were like, oh, uh, I'm tired of this. You know, never anyone getting justice, and all these assholes are still you know doing whatever <laughs> they want. As soon as I listened to that part, I texted Tony and I was like, so do you think Brett will be? happy when he gets a little bit of justice here <laughs> Come i was on. like you know he will man yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. i was i was cheering and yelling at the episode this screen i was i was very happy and uh uh not to skip ahead too much but yeah aria's whole thing like yeah as soon as i saw the preview and i was like it's the faceless assassin guy that guy is cool as it's shit faceless man fuck yeah <laughs> i love uh, the faceless assassin I loved the first thing that Arya said when she saw uh, Brienne. She was like, you can shit later. There's people coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. But I was let's not talk about ex- Varys, though. Yeah, Varys leads uh, Tyrion around. And even by the time the alarms go off, like they discovered Tywin and, and, and the whore. Yeah, what are those bells? Varys, Varys and... Uh, Tyrion were fucking on the ship, and you notice how Varys was just like, ding dong, ding dong. He looks at the city, he's like, well, so much for that. I guess I'm going on the boat. Well, I like <laughs> it because he was like, actually walking back towards the city. And yeah. you know, he's like walking back, he's looking at it, the bells go off, and he's like, you know what? No, I'm happy. I, I, I ain't got nothing here. I can, I can just let burn. Just I, it. Right. I, I, I think I'm going to get on the boat, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then he sits the down, some... like, right next to Tyrion's box. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You almost you almost want to see him pet the box and be like, "It's okay, buddy. We're in this together." Yeah. I don't think he was. I don't think he was feeling that way. I think he was sitting there. Was like, "Well, fuck." Uh-huh. <laughs> he's he's, he's up the door. He's like, "What did you do?" Yeah. I find it interesting how Varys was all like, "Oh yeah, I can't help you," but then he ended up helping them anyway. Yeah. Well, he couldn't help him, you know, publicly. He yeah. Help him back then. Yeah. Well, the thing I like about this show, the this part of the show as compared to the books is that it looks like Varys did it more to help him out like he did in the books because in the books it seemed like the only reason he helped him out is because Jamie forced him to yeah I yeah, kind of yeah. gathered that though like by the fact that he said he wouldn't help Tyrion out and then Jamie asked him and he's like oh yeah sure <laughs> well I think too as part of it was you know I mean he knows okay so there's been two different seasons where people have asked uh, various, uh you know wh- who he's you know fighting for and he says I'm fighting for the realm you know that's the side I stand on is the side of the realm and I think that you know he knew that Tyrion you know really did save King's Landing and without him he would have been they would have been sacked by Stannis and uh, so I think that was part of it too yeah but 
but this is my devil's advocate to that. Why would he save him after he saved King's Landing? Because he, I mean, is he used to King's Landing anymore? Does he see any more use of Tyrion to help the realm? I guess I don't know. That's he a good question. Does. He, he's plotting something. Yeah. I don't know if that. I don't know how well that's going, considering his reaction when the bells went off. And does it? What do? What were those bells? Does anybody know? Were they just guards? They're alert bells. bells. Yeah, they're like yes. alert bells. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because somebody probably found Tywin dead, so they had to start yeah. ringing the bells. The king probably, is dead. Probably, yeah, probably to lock down the the city or whatever. You know. Right. Yep. Nobody in, nobody out. That's why. That's why Varys was like, "Well, fuck it then." Yeah, it, it would be really suspicious to walk in as the alarms yeah. go off. You're like, hey guys, what's, what's up? Happening? What are these alarms about? <laughs> hey, we know you. You know a lot of stuff. Come with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Those Arya. Guys? Arya coming across, or rather, Brienne coming across Arya. Yeah. Was it they They realized who the, the hound was? Yeah. yeah Podrick but, pointed yeah. out who the hound was, and then yep. Brienne basically realized Deduce that it was Arya. Yeah. Yeah. What about the part right before that where like Brienne and Arya were having a little moment like, hey, what kind of That the was same? so cute. <laughs> yeah. Girls with swords. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> our fathers taught us. They didn't want us to do like this. Like, our fathers didn't want us to do this. We like Girl, the knights. They wanna wanna have fun. <laughs> that was fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in there. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> I, I was thinking more they want a girls want a sword fight. Was, yeah, right. Yeah, there's girls no song for that, sword. Colby. Girls yeah. want a scissor. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that was a that was a cute little moment they had. Like, oh, what's yours name? Oh, Oathkeeper. What's yours? Oh, Needle. I uh, I thought it was kind of funny how the Hound called Brienne out on her sword. Like he immediately yeah. like, I've seen Lannister gold all my life. That's Lannister gold. Yeah. He's like, bitch, you're not going to tell me that's not Lannister gold. It's like, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, at least she was honest about it, too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? And um, Arya didn't... I like how Arya kind of thought for herself. She didn't automatically go with, with Brienne. Um, and ultimately, first of all, the fucking, the fucking fight scene. It was just a raw fucking with, with Brienne and the Hound... And I loved it. There was yep, no yeah. music. There was no, like, there was, it was just them fucking cunt punching and, and, and dick kicking each other and just, like, kicking each other's ass all across the, it the meadow there. It was brutal. Brutal. Yeah, that awesome. was pretty, pretty epic. <laughs> Started yes, with swords kid. and ended up with, like, fists and rocks and cunt punts. Yeah, that was great. And kids, remember, <laughs> if you kick a girl in the cunt hard enough, it will hurt her too, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I used to play softball, man. I've got ground balls to the to the hoo ha before. <laughs> fucking hurts. But yeah, that that yeah, the fight like it started off with swords, and then it just ended up with fucking rocks and shit. It's like, damn, anything they fucking can use. Fucking bit his ear yeah, off. She bit his motherfucking <laughs> ear off. And not only did she bite his ear off, but it wasn't like she bit it off and spit it out. She bit it off, stood up, went, Argh! and then spit it out. Yeah, yeah she like <laughs> held like it in her mouth for a second before she spit it out. <laughs> it was oh, salty. Man. <laughs> that had to be disgusting. <laughs> he hadn't cleaned himself in who knows uh, how long. Uh, ever? Yeesh. Yeah, fucking, so... Brienne ultimately wins that one, leaves him to die, and uh, goes off to find Arya. Arya, who goes up to the Hound and just kind of lets him just verbally just barf all over her and just be like, yeah, I should have fucked your sister and I should have fucked you. I should have done this. Just fucking kill me. Please just kill me. I'm so pathetic. And Arya's just, she says nothing. She fucking (laughs) takes his coin purse and makes on the marriage. (laughs) And I love that. I fucking love that about her. Yeah, I love the fact that she just sat there and let him go. Like, she's just kind of sitting there with that look on her face like, "Uh uh-huh. Uh-huh. Fascinating. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm taking your gold. <laughs> Clearly, death is what you want, oh, so I'm not going to give it to you. So you could just lay on this fucking rock and die. I don't care. Take me off your fucking list, girl. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, nah, no. Nah, I'm going to take your money instead. What do you think it was more of a I'm going to let you die slowly thing, or I can't kill you because I've actually grown to like you? Oh, no. the, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I told well, I, think... I told Rachel, I was like, Arya is getting to be a scary bitch. <laughs> well, I saw it as like uh, that's your rightful uh, punishment for what the things you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I might I might like you, but you still did a lot of bad shit. Yeah. I don't think she ever liked him. Like that's that's the kind of thing that I because she constantly told him. Like I think that everybody kind of didn't take Arya seriously, even though they totally should have. When she says, you know, I'm gonna kill you, and he's like, oh, okay, whatever. You're a little girl. I'll you know kind of keep track of you and and whatnot. And I well, he seemed pretty proud when he was like, I'm the one who's taking care of her. You yeah. know, and she's like, oh, that's what you're doing, and he's like, yeah, that's what I'm doing, and he kind of smiled, you know. So, yeah, I don't know. Which, it seemed like there was a closeness that was being built a little bit. On his end. On his end. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what I'm saying. The whole thing, like, Arya is a cold, cold, scary person at this point. In an awesome way. But the fact that, like, yeah, the, the Hound was, you know, starting to kind of take care of her. And he was kind of gruff around the edges. And she held that malice and spite in her heart. She's she's holding on to that hatred. And yeah. It, it's consumed her entirely, and that's that's the kind of reaction I get from that. Is you know, in spite of everything, he still has to pay for his crimes in her <laughs> eyes, which means that she's never going to forgive any of the people on her list. Yeah, pretty. Uh, you gotta have pretty big balls to uh, just go up to a ship captain and be like, "Hey, I'm going where you're going. Here's a coin that I got from the coolest person I've ever met in my whole life. And <laughs> you're taking me with you. <laughs> Follow my goons. And immediately she goes on the boat. Yeah, he's yeah, like, uh, you, you, you get a cabin. I, I love the way his tone just changes. Like, listen, bitch, you can't come out. Well, you got the coin? Right, we got a cabin for you. It's cool. Let's go. I love that. It was great. <laughs> the fuck is that coin? Is that going to be dis- explained to us, or is that... That's her ticket to into his into that guy's order, I think, isn't it? Well, I, I know right. what it is, technically. I mean, what is it exactly? Is it... Is it's a it coin. A, Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, is is it something that the Order of Assassin gives to like proteges or people they owe favors to, or is it like their calling card? I don't remember. I don't yeah, know. me either. All I know um, is it, it just gets you into that special place. That's all I know. Well, okay, so she uses it there, and then she tries to use it again when she gets to Bravos, and they're like, okay, you know, that doesn't work for everybody, basically. Yeah. And then she gets to the special place Tony just mentioned, and gives it to him, and the guy's oh, like, right. really? This is what you want to do? Are you sure about this? You know, okay, well, then you're going to have to start training, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slow, down. slow down. Well, you know, you cut me off there. You're going to have to start uh, training your dishwashing skills and your sweeping skills. And- <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's kind of an in, more an admittance pass than a business card. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, I guess for certain people, you know, the people who know what it is and actually respect it, then yeah, well, that's, that's kind of okay, like your foot in the door. Let me ask you this: Is it um? Because I, I I'm taking it to be more like a ticket. I'm wondering if it if it's tied exclusively to the faceless man, like uh, um, if to his order. Okay, so it's it's uh. Anyone who has one of those, from the impression that I got from the book, is somebody that's done a favor to one of those people, and so they were like, you know, as a sign as a sign of respect, you know, like, oh hey, you help me out, you know, flash this whenever you need it, we'll help you out. Yeah, I could see that. But she just doesn't know what it really, you know, what it does or what it did or what it meant. And so she what just, it do? It was like the only what thing that I've got in my pocket is this is this you know coin. And actually, in the book, she doesn't she doesn't take his coin purse. She's got no money at all, and that's the only thing she has. She reaches in her pocket and realizes that's in her pocket and gives it to him and says, "Valor Mogolis." Hmm. Yeah, but I like the part that they added, you know, the fact, that, you know, they added her sticking the money. I love that. I don't know. I, yeah. I just, I well, just he was awesome. still alive, too. You're going to watch me take your money, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he tries to yeah. stop her. She's just quick and thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's mine now. All right. What well, do you guys want to end where we where we should no, have no, began no, no, with no. Jon Snow? No, no, no. We st- we missed Daenerys. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I forgot all about her. <laughs> You forget about, I, t- I texted Tony because uh, Brett had to go out at the at the time the episode aired, so I was texting Tony and I made the mistake of going on fucking Twitter, and then I was like, nope, people are going to fucking spoil me, so 
Um, I was bitching at Tony, like, I better see some fucking dragons this time. And I saw some dragons, but not in the way that I wanted. Yeah, when you told me about that, I was like, uh, what do I say to her? So I kind of just avoided <laughs> that. <laughs> like, yeah. there's dragons in it. Yeah, the fucking... In a sad way. I thought that they were going to... I thought that she was maybe going to send the two out to try and get the other one, or there was going to be a dragon fight, or there was going to be something. No, she fucking threw them in. Threw them in, a cat- threw them in the catacombs with some, like, dead goats or something, and fucking chained them up and left them there. Like, they're going to turn into monsters. That's not how you raise... Dra- Somebody needs to teach her how to train some dragons. Somebody needs to rent her <laughs> oh, no. that fucking movie... How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> I, By the I would way, agree. Sit yeah. down and watch it. I would agree, but I, I'm sitting here with my cat chewing on my hand, so ter- obviously I'm not much better. Well, the thing is, what could she have done? I mean, Drogon's out there burning kids alive. She, you know, that's like the only option she had in her little, you know, I don't know. I don't. What else could she have done? So basically? lock up the other two? That yeah, right. that's, that's the classic example of the dickhead that ruins it for everyone. You yeah, know that's what I mean? What... <laughs> What else could she have done? I don't know. Well, uh, maybe this is just me because I've owned dogs growing up my entire life. But just because one goes bad doesn't mean that the other ones have gone bad. Yeah. And yeah, those yeah. are dogs, yeah. not dragons, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Your right. dogs don't breathe I, and, fire. And you got to remember, she's got to keep the opinion of the people. And she can't be seen, you know, letting that just go on. Like, yeah, so yeah. what? They're my dragons. What are you going to do about it? You know? Oh, she's, she should, that's why I'm saying she. I agree with Rachel. She should have taken her other two dragons and and hunted that down in a display of power. How would she, she do that? I don't think she has that much control over these dragons. Yeah. And that's my problem. Like she she hasn't been training these things at all. She should have started training them when they were young. Here's the I mean, thing though. Um it, it, I read this in that that rev- this review I read. Um she probably would have ha- Okay, cuz she obviously has a big enough army to take over King's Landing stuff. She could probably learn how to train those dragons in Westeros where they actually have books on how to do this shit. She has none of that. So like you're saying she should have trained them fine. How would she know how to do that? There's no basis for how to train dragons in this part of the world. Because you right, train well, most animals the same. It's 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 not actually a difficult process. It's just that she's been letting those dragons run roughshod because, you know, I, I hate to say it like this, but she raises it like a lot of women raise dogs, and that's they don't really have a very strong. She's not lording over it. She's not alphaing those dragons, which she should have been doing since she was bigger than them. Right. Now it's going to be really hard because they're pretty much feral dragons that she just lets run around. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's gone. Feral he's cat like, fuck this shit. <laughs> He's not listening, but I, these two do seem to listen to her a little bit more, though. But again, it's like, it, like you like, mom, her. mom, where are you going? Mom? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so sad. All the yeah, wolves was... are so well behaved. Well, yeah. they're like dogs. You could, tra- there's, you could, you, know, you don't yeah, have to train do, a dog. Okay. How dumb are the dragons in the book? I mean, because the they're dragons the strike me. Yeah, they strike me as being somewhat intelligent creatures, which means they're trainable. It has right. nothing to do with the species, but the intelligence. Lizards are pretty intelligent themselves, but it's hard to train them, too. I yeah. mean, it's been done, but it's... But I mean, how do you really tell it, do. don't breathe fire on people? How do you communicate that? Right. When it's you, small you rub his and nose it starts it. to breathe fire, you whack it in the face and say, No, dragon! <laughs> Except for when you need <laughs> it to breathe dragon. fire on your enemies. Yeah, and that's when you say Draconis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe you're right. Maybe it's just Daenerys when, has been dropping he, the ball. Yeah, just, you know, it's it's like training a dog, man. You tell it Draconis, it speeds fire, you give it a goat. You, you you don't say Draconis, you don't say Simon Says, and he spits fire on some fucking kid, you smack him in the nose. <laughs> While he's still small enough to, to actually respect you. And yeah, I mean, now these things are the size of fucking cars, so I don't yeah, think she can do that Yeah, now these things are huge. Yeah, and yeah, here's my question. Without any training at all, how does she expect to be able to eventually ride these things? Hmm... Especially if she's just, she's just going to keep them in the catacombs, right? I mean, how can you train well, yeah, those that, things down there? Well, yeah, that's going to turn them into monsters. That's not the catacombs. Yeah. Well, you, you know, let's just call it catacombs for now. That's the yeah. slave pits. That's where the slaves used to live. Well, yeah, and by the way, that's symbolic, too, oh. isn't it? She just freed an entire city, and then she enslaves her own fucking dragons. And remember, in past seasons, she was like, you don't make slaves of dragons. Now she enslaved her own dragons. How crazy is that? By the way, I mean, I, I, I understand why, um, you know, the before the before the guy came in with his, the charred remains of his daughter, the old guy before that who uh, tried to reason with her and be like, you know, before you came in and set us all free, I was a respected member of this family. I taught all the children. I, 
and now I'm I'm nothing, you know, and yeah. I I want to be sell, you know, I want to be sold back to my master. And she's like, I didn't free you guys just to send you right back to your masters, and you know they're you know they're gonna abuse this. Um, and, couldn't they have done something like, yeah, you can go work for him again, <laughs> just he needs to pay you daily wages. Yeah, and that seems like that could have been really easily solved. Uh, well, that's why uh, I think she said that uh, there's a contract lasting no more than a year, so that <laughs> if if it does go south or they start mistreating the slaves, the slaves after a year could just be like, yeah, okay, bye. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder um, if it says something about Daenerys' leadership skills. She obviously doesn't know how to train her dragons, and it seems like everything's falling apart in her city. I wonder I think how that's long. That's a common theme. Yeah. Yeah, you she's notice very that. new. She's very green. Yeah. She's a greenhorn. She's not. She's learning her way around. She got. She got a lot kind of handed on her plate. She took. She bit off more than she could chew. I think, and yeah. she's not dealing with it all that well. Those pits look exactly how I imagined them when I read the books. Yeah, well, so did uh, uh, Tywin's room with the big lion crest, uh, like with, between those two pillars that separated yeah. like his desk. That was exactly like I pictured it. The Tywin's room looked exactly the same. The pits did not look anything like I imagined them. Well, are you thinking, mm-hmm. Tony? Are you thinking the fly- fighting pits or the slaver pits or the slave pits? Cause no, the, the pits where they kept the dragons. I, oh, I imagine okay. them looking a lot well, different. Well, don't they move them into the fighting pits later? I think they do. So maybe I'm thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. I don't think so. But yeah, Tyler's room was spot on. Yeah, that well, was good. On the yeah. wall. From the wall. Yeah, there we go. We're going to we're, we're we're gonna gonna end, end where it we, how we it actually began. started out. Yeah. Yep. Um, Jon Snow takes off and goes into Mance Raider's camp. Arms up. Just like, hey, just me. And they, they kind of shoot him in there and, and not not shoot him. Shoot him. In- <laughs> yeah. And... I thought it was I thought it was uh kind of gallant of them, you know, the way they treated him with with respect and and you know, brought him into where Mance was actually at and you know, where he could talk to him and and saw that he came. I guess they they should have seen that he wasn't unarmed, right? Cuz was he He was, was unarmed. Well, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, was yeah, he dropped unarmed. he dropped everything, remember? Like right yeah. before they let him in. Like he wanted, he was going to grab uh, one of the utensils to kill him. Um, the thing is, and you brought this up about the gallant thing, because um, Mass Raiders, you know, quote unquote, the bad guy, but he was on the up and up the entire time. Who was he the was. only one that actually betrayed anyone here? It was Jon Snow. Yeah. Jon Snow actually was going to betray him. Um, Mass Raider, and think about it like this: Why is Mass Raider invading the wall? It's not because he wants to conquer it. He wants to be on the other side when the crazy shit starts to happen. Yeah, yeah so, I think. I mentioned yeah. to Rachel that this is the first time that anybody actually really put it like that. It's like, so wait, that's all the Wildlings want is to yep. not be locked in a room with the White Walkers? Yeah. Pretty that's much. pretty reasonable, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's you're That's why they came up like... with that agreement, you know, like, you know, we don't fucking kill anybody. We just want south of the wall. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just interesting how Jon Snow is supposed to be, like, one of the more um, noble people on the show. But he was there. He was duplicitous. He was going to kill Mance Raider. And Mance Raider, he figured that out, you know, eventually. And he, you know, and it's funny because um, when um, quote unquote, you know, the army comes up, <laughs> Mance yeah, Raider, you know, he I, he gets that knife on John's throat so fast. I'm like, could John have actually killed him? You know? Yeah, agreed. I the 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 first thing I thought when that happens is um, when when kind of Stannis comes yeah. out and, and rides up on everybody, it's like, well, hey, Stannis, there's your army, and Wildlings, there's your home beyond the wall, done. Yeah, like I, I that was Brett was talking about when he was, you know, hooting and hollering at the screen. That was my moment because I've always said throughout this series, I love Stannis and the way he swarmed in and and took both sides of that forest was just it reminded me of how I play medieval total war. Yeah, so I was just like, yeah, fucking Stannis. (laughs) Uh, Did you guys immediately know that was Stannis' army? Oh, I did. Okay. So I, here's my uh, question where... to Brett and Rachel. Did you guys see the previous, uh, previous whatever, on Game of Thrones or whatever that shit's called? No, I think we skipped it this time. No, we saw it. Did we? Yeah. Why? Because that gave it away. I mean, we knew that from, like, last season, I think, that they are going to go to the wall. But it's it's like, if you just tell them right before the episode, it kind of loses that, that you know, that little... 
Oh wow, it's Stannis, whatever. Yeah, well, we, we've yeah. been complaining about that this entire season of this fucking spoiler alert. You know, how they always yeah. do that shit. That's how That's I true. knew Arya was gonna well, be yeah. into Bravos yeah. too. But yeah, that oh, was a great yeah. moment. It, you know, Stannis just rolled in, just fucked everybody up. Yeah, both flanks. That was awesome. That's how you do it, man. You gotta flank them. Where is uh, Stannis' kingdom in relation to the Wall? Uh, he's extremely far north. Uh, I mean, south of the Wall. Like he, like okay, you know where King's Landing is? It's directly east of um. That's where Dragonstone is. It's directly east of um, King's Landing, a little bit north, northeast. Yeah, like a little, a little yeah. Bit. So yeah. he had, he had to go through other kingdoms to get to the Wall. Mm-hmm. No, he didn't. He could just take the. He could just go through the the ocean. Well, he he went he went to Bravos, which yeah. was across the narrow sea, and from Bravos, it's pretty much just a straight line to get yeah, to the Wall. Exactly. Still, though, that's like a long way out of his way. Is he only there because the Red Lady told him to be? At this point, that's what it seems like. Yes. Well, no, didn't uh, there's well, another, yeah. there's another reason, but I don't want to get into that. It didn't uh, what's his name? Davos tell him wasn't he the first one to tell him to go to the wall? Yeah, um, it was. But yeah, it's like that was the only thing Davos and Melisandre agreed on. It's like you got to go to the wall. Yeah. I like um when Stannis asks John, you know, when they they make the connection of of who John is and who his father was. Um, and he asked him, your father was a, was a respectable man. What do you think he would do here? And, uh, John says, you know, I think he'd take him as prisoner see, and, and see what he has to say. And also, uh, you, you guys want to burn all these people before nightfall, by the way. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was a cool scene. It's like, hey, my father fought for you, Stannis. You know, I yeah. like that whole little scene. Yeah. So that immediately raises John and Stannis' eyes. Because he actually, he actually seems to value his opinion. Uh, that was Stannis interesting. Stop being a dickbag. <laughs> he kept calling Stannis my liege, and then later on when he was talking to Tormund, he was like, I have no king. So he, yeah. there he is again, kind of lying, you know? Oh yeah, J- Jon Snow is just, he's, he's, he's gonna be... I like how he's turning out to be. He's not, uh, like, true blue like his father was, necessarily. Yeah. He's, he's down to do some shifty shit. Yeah. I think he's realized real quick being on the wall that's how you need to survive. Yeah. When that wildling guy, the the ginger wildling, the crazy eyed guy. Tormund Giant Spain. Yeah, fucking uh talks to him about a greet and uh, I was like, Did you love her? Because she loved you. And then we got to see a greet again, all nice and pretty and dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the interaction he had with uh, Mance when he was talking about. Um, he's like, uh, we had a giant go into the tunnel and never came out. Like, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, like, he was. He was so and so, last of his name. You know, the king of the giants in a lineage long, longer than before the first man. He's like, yeah, Gr- Grin was a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, they're like Tamag the Mighty and Grin the Farmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did Jon Snow have to bring Egret's body north of the wall to burn her? I yeah, understand well, the be- concept for burying her. No, it's just like, hey, you know, um, she she's can't a, bury she's her. She's a woman the of the north. She, yeah. she needed to go in the north, not like lumped in a pile with all the other ones. Right, and, yeah. and you can't bury her. You, you yeah. have to take her north to burn her. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it just seems like geography of burning somebody is... Still your resting place, I'd say. Yeah, you know, if he's leaving the ashes there. Yeah, the ashes thing. in the bones. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So, before we end, you're, this is for Tony and for Colby again. <laughs> he, <laughs> there was one omission. We were not going to get into details, other than the fact, did you guys see it fit it not being there? Or did he, you guys... I'm going to be okay. very vague about this. That scene oh, would have been really cool, but okay, in all hold on, honesty, guys, guys, guys. Yeah. Okay, insert spoiler tag here. Warning: spoilers ahead. Warning: spoilers ahead. You guys can talk about it now. Okay, you guys sure, should be Brett? vague and confusing. Yeah, if anybody doesn't want to hear a spoiler, thanks for joining us. Cut out now. Yeah, yeah Brett, but I mean, you yeah, don't watch see the you next season. And you blah, don't watch blah, blah, the uh, spoilers. But you don't watch the preview for this episode coming up because you don't want to be spoiled on the episode coming up. And this is yeah. like spoiling the this next is, season. Yeah, and I'm going to take my headphones off. Oh, oh, okay. 
I'm gonna leave you guys with Rachel, who loves spoilers. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was just saying, like, there's no reason for me being here, you know, okay, to tell anybody who's listening, they're not gonna understand it. So for me and all the other uh, TV show watchers only, uh, have a good night, guys. Good talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> see you next season. Yeah. See you yeah. next season. Stick it's around for, fun, some, for some speculation for next season. Yeah. Stick around for some speculation and and spoiler possibilities the spoiler, for, spoiler for next season. Consider it bonus content because we love you. That's <laughs> yes. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Brett. Bye. Later, Brett. Okay, I'm still here. Go ahead. I'm gonna drop the shackles now because now I could talk. Yes. Okay. Lady Stoneheart, obviously. I was expecting this shit. Thank. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is the one time I am thankful for fucking Twitter spoilers, man. Because people were complaining about this shit. I'm like, wait, she's not in it? Good. Now I know she's not going to be in it. Because if I knew she was not going to be... If I went in thinking she was going to be in it and she wasn't in it, I would have been fucking pissed off. So I'm glad. Yeah, that? Lady Stoneheart is Catelyn Stark. Back from the dead. Oh, okay. I was remember, remember the, the fi- remember, Yeah. Remember the, the dude who kept coming back? Um, What's his name again? Um, Thoros of Mer. No, not Thor. Thoros of brought him back, but Dar- Beric and Darren. Darren. Yeah, Dar- Beric and Darren gave the last of his power to her to bring her back, but she died where their throat slit, so she can't even really talk. She's like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so in, in the book, that's how it actually ended. Like, one of the, um, one of Walder Frey's, like, family members, like, he gets killed by her, and her, like, who she's running the, the Brotherhood Without Banners now, isn't she? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it was supposed to end like that. But the thing is, I don't think it, the show didn't need that. You could you could have that way later on with Brienne. You know, when she meets her, that yeah. that's fine. That, I, I don't mind that. Um, that's that's logical. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't I don't mind them. But since now we're just going crazy with spoilers, I am very very worried about the next few seasons. I've talked to Carlos and Colby about this. I'm very worried that people are going to think the show jumped a shark because the next two books are fucking boring, and the show is going to be boring because like it's just padding for the last two books. No, really? There's no, yeah. There's no big crazy things that happen. No big character deaths. No big battles. Nothing. It's all just padding. It's all just hmm. story building. Yeah, so I am yeah. really worried that people are going to go, oh my god, this show jumped the shark because there's nothing crazy that's going to happen. Nothing. I don't, I that's don't think why so. I, hmm? I, think, I, think, I think you got to give people more credit than that. If the if the book people are going like, no, just just wait. It, seriously, it gets better, then they'll stick around. But it's not that it's going to get better. I don't know if it's going to get better because these two books are just meh. Oh, it has to. It has it's to. Not that, it has it's to. not that... It's not that they're well to me. They're not boring. Okay, this is what I mean. I, I, it's not, it's, okay, hold on. It's not that it won't get better. It probably will get better in the sixth and seventh book, but we haven't read those yet. I'm just talking about the material that we have to draw from now is not going to make for very good television. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, and then yeah. we still have to go over the. I mean, I like the Dorn stuff, but it's. I don't know how they're going to portray it. Really, that's the what I Dorn mean. Stuff the, the, and, and the Greyjoys. Remember the uh, Victorian and. The other Greyjoys? Yeah, but like I said, all that shit is just build up to what's going to happen. There are there's no big events. There's no colored weddings. There's no, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So I don't know. If Tyrion on a fucking boat for half a season is going to bore the well, shit out of people. There's well, Daenerys riding uh, Drogo. Drogon. Yeah, at the, end Drogon, of, yeah. at the end of season, what, seven? Come on, man. I think that's... Okay. So They're going to be mashing season... shit together. They have yeah. to. Yeah. yeah They've yeah, already they been to. mashing shit together. The cool shit happens at the end of the fifth book, the, and that's not going to happen for a while. The fourth right. book was boring. Okay. So what we were saying earlier, though, the dragons get taken up to the fighting pits, which is an uncovered like coliseum type thing, and then the Drogon yep. comes in and he starts like breathing fire everywhere, and that she goes was up. That's awesome, and, but that's yeah. Yeah, at the end of the season. <laughs> right. But think about think about this: where they locked up dragons. That's where Quentin dies. Remember, like I could, I could picture it exactly where Daenerys left the dragons. This episode, I could see exactly where Quentin and the other two guys go in and just fucking get burnt to hell. Yeah, dude. But guys, seriously, you don't think by the third episode people are gonna, are gonna be like, "Hey, what the fuck's going on? Where's all the big shit? What's going on here?" Well, uh... here's the thing. Here's the thing. Next season, I think the the oh shit moment is gonna be the Stoneheart moment where she's gonna try to where she hangs Podrick. Yeah. And so I think that's going to be the oh shit moment. And maybe something else. Maybe it's like Jamie neglecting uh, Cersei. Remember when he goes to uh, to the Riverlands? Yeah. Oh, all that stuff right. was cool. No, but, no, yeah. no. I got, I got before, before anything else, I got kind of spoiled into next season. I don't know if you guys want to hear it, 
it deviates from the books, but apparently uh, Jamie is gonna go to Dorne. What? Oh. Yeah, that's what that's really? what I heard. I'll, I'll I'll link you guys to the podcast that I was listening to, and these guys are freaking bigger nerds than we are about this. Shit. <laughs> um, I'm actually glad you brought that up though, because that's something I also speculated on. In order to make the next couple of seasons more interesting, I think they're gonna have to start making up a lot of shit just to keep things interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, look, look, what they did, look what they did with Brienne and, and the Hound. That wasn't supposed to happen. Right. Because right. what would have happened in the. Look, like, this is what I mean. This, how was that supposed to end? The Hound just falls over because he's sick and Arya leaves him. That's what's supposed to happen. That's boring. So they made up all this crazy shit with him and Brienne. I think they're going to have to start doing that for the next couple of seasons. Just make up a bunch of crazy shit just to keep it interesting. Yeah. So the, the whole Dorn thing. Because, I mean, I wonder if they're going to make. Because the, the, the Sand Snakes and the whole. The Ariane, they're freaking intriguing as hell, but I don't know how they how they're gonna translate them to. The That's show. what I'm saying. Dude. Yeah, I'm worried. Gonna be I'm really hard. worried. Thanks for joining us. If you stuck around, and I uh, hope you enjoyed your little extra spoilery cast on spoiler alert. Um, again, Brett already left us, but I'm Rachel Murdoch, Carlos Romero, Tony Polanco, and Colby Schumacher. You guys have anything to say before we say sayonara until next season? Uh, yeah, thanks you guys for listening to us. Uh, we always have fun doing these. I um, hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, we'll probably have more random spoiler alerts throughout the summer. Um, I'm going to try to resurrect, pun, you know, pun intended, the Walking Dead one. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's I, it. Yeah, just thank you guys for listening. It's just it's really cool. Yeah. yeah, dude, we have fun. Of yeah, that was a lot of fun. Guys too. It's sad that it's over, you know? <laughs> It's Over for, so what, like 10 months, whatever. Yeah. We can do it. <laughs> we did it before. That's true. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.